Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. One of the comments that I received in a video a while back was somebody asking if I could show how I plan a quilt from beginning to end. So, you know, that's quite a long process and that's not something I can do in one video. So I thought I would just start at step one and then go from there and make as many videos as I need to get through the entire process. So this is going to be a series of videos about how to make a particular quilt. So if you want to join along, um, the pattern is available and um, I have a couple of other links that you can follow and um, we'll make this quilt together. So I'm going to adjust the camera and show you how I first get started on designing a quilt. Now when you're planning a quilt, there's a lot of questions you have to ask yourself. Um, basically, you know, what is the quilt for? Is it for a particular uh, occasion? Um, you know, like, if it's a, is it a for a birthday? Is it for an anniversary? Is it for a wedding? Is it for a baby? Is it a quilt that you want for your bed? Is it something you want to hang up in your living room? Uh, something you just want to throw over your couch so that you can snuggle up under it on a cold winter's night? Um, you know, there's lots of different reasons to make a quilt. What I do is something usually will give me an idea that of of a quilt that I want to make. This block from the Stash Buster series is this is a quatrefoil block. This is the one that first jumped out at me and said I would really like to have a quilt with this design and these colors in it. So during the series I made four of these blocks. I make four of every one of the Stash Buster blocks so that I can show them to you how they would look when they're you know set side by side. Um, but four isn't enough to make a quilt the size that I want so I need to make more blocks. So this was my inspiration this this block here. So I already know the block I want to use. I know the colors that I want. Um, the thing is the size. So I got onto my computer and made myself a, um, a worksheet in Excel. Here's a worksheet I've come up with to help me calculate how much fabric I need for a quilt. And I start out with um, the block name, uh, like here I want to do the quatrefoil. So I write that in. And, or I can do this on my computer since it is on my computer. And the quilt size, I just want a lap size quilt. So I'm not going to put a specific size on there because um, that requires a lot more calculation if I'm wanting to hit specific numbers and at this point I don't I don't I'm not interested in an in exact size uh, the block size now I'm doing the quatrefoil block here and that is a 12 inch block so I'm going to put that it's a 12 by 12 and I want one border that is two inches wide and I want a second border that is four inches so I'll put that in there and then I don't want a third and a fourth border on this quilt so the number of fabrics and my fabric colors. Um, color number one, I'm going to assign a color to a number. So that will help me when I get down to the calculation. So I'm going to do color number one is going to be the teal. So this is the darker color. So I'm going to write in teal. And then color number two is going to be my uh, medium. And I'm going to call this aqua. It's more of a just light teal. And um, I'm going to put, but I'm going to put aqua down. I know what that means, so that's all that counts. And then color number three will be the white. So I'll put that in there. And then in this block, I want, or in this quilt, I want nine blocks. And I want the set three by three. So I'm going to put three by three. And I want to use a straight set. Okay, and then the quilt size without borders. I need that for more calculations. Okay, so if I have nine 12 inch blocks and they're set three by three, so that's 12 times three, which is 36 by 36. Okay, next thing I need is the quilt size with the borders. So I'm gonna have two borders 
um, so I have a two inch and a four inch border so that's six inches and that's going to be adding um, six inches on each side so that's like 12 inches on the width and 12 inches on the length so if you add that here then you get um, 48 so the quilt is going to be 48 by 48 with the borders so now I need to know how many pieces that I need per block so I can calculate the yardage that I need so on color number one I already put in that I want teal this is in my I put this in in my computer and I need two different sizes of teal so I've got this piece here which is a four and a half by four and a half inch piece so I need a total of four of those okay so I need four pieces that are four and a half by four and a half and then I need four pieces that are two and a half by two and a half. So the total number that I need for the whole quilt is to take this number, you multiply it by the number of blocks, which is nine. So nine times four is 36. So I need 36 of each one of these. And then for the aqua, I need one piece that is four and a half by four and a half. And then I need four pieces that are two and a half by two and a half. Okay, so if I need for the total quilt, I need nine of these pieces and I need 36 of those. And then for the white, I need 16 pieces that are two and a half by two and a half. And then if I multiply that times nine, I get 144. So that's going to help me calculate how much fabric that I need for the block. And to do that, I use a Robert Kaufman quilt calculator, a quilting calculator, right here. And I want to go into pieces to yardage area. And I'm going to put the width of the fabric as 42 just to give me a little extra um, number of pieces to be cut. I need 36 pieces that are four and a half by four and a half so 4.5 by 4.5 and then I click calculate and it'll tell me that I need a half yard of fabric to cut that many pieces so I can put down here that I need one half yard here and then for the two and a half by two and a half I'm going to go back and here I'm going to go 2.5 to 2.5 and calculate and then I need a quarter yard. So I'm going to put one quarter. So now I know I need, basically I need three quarters yard of teal as my total. So right there is my total. And now when I go over, I'm going to go over to the aqua and do the same thing again and I need let's see I need nine pieces now so we're going to go back put in nine and I need nine pieces that are four and a half by four and a half key that in and calculate and I need one eighth yard so one eighth and then I know 36 two and a half inch squares are right here. So I know that's one quarter. So I basically need um, three eighths of a yard, which, you know, you could buy three eighths of a yard. I'm just gonna roll that, uh, round that up to a half. And now on the white, I need um, 144 pieces that are two and a half by two and a half. And I need five eighths of a yard for that. Okay. Okay, so now we need to go to the backing fabric. <clears throat> now on my backing fabric, I'm gonna use white. And 
I will, since the size of the quilt is 48 by 48, I'm going to use the 60 inch wide fabric, but you can calculate for any size you want. And I'm also going to use the calculator for that, and I'm going to go up to the backing and batting measurements. And the width of the fabric, I'm going to use 60 inch wide fabric, and the quilt quilt width is 48, the length is 48, and then the overage. I want um, 6 inches on each side. That just helps me with um, clamping it onto my um, red snappers on my long arm. If you're you know, doing it on a domestic machine, you're not going to need that much extra fabric. I just like that extra so I can get my ruler up at the top and um, have it laying flat and not have to kind of manipulate it. So anyway, we're going to do that. So I need one and two thirds yards of 60 inch wide fabric to make the backing for this. So that be one and two thirds. I'm going to put that in here. Okay, so now for the binding. Um, I calculated that I need three eighths of a yard and to, to do that you go into the calculator and you go to your binding and you decide if you want inches or metric, the width of your fabric, which is 42, and the binding strip width, it goes in quarter inch inc increments. And I usually cut mine like two and an eighth inches, but I'm going to calculate for two and a quarter. And the dimensions of the quilt, which is 48 by 48. And I want regular binding, not bias. So I'm going to calculate and tells me I need three-eighths of a yard and it tells me how many strips I need to cut. So I need six strips of that. So now the border fabric. So we're going to go back into border yardage and the width of the fabric once again up there inches and type of border. I want a non-mitered border. And the dimensions of the quilt, this is before you put the borders on. That's the measurement before borders. So we're going to do 36 by 36. My first border I want 2 inches. My second border I want 4 inches. Click next. And you can go up to 4 borders. And then we're going to calculate. So border 1 is 2 inches wide. I need 1 third yard. And I need to cut the strips at 2 and a half inches and I need four strips all together. So border two is four inches wide. I need five eighths yard and I'm going to cut the strips four and a half inches wide and I need five total strips. And here it tells you the overall width and length of your quilt. So 48 by 48. So down here I have put border one, I need one third yard and then border two, I need five eighths. Now if you want to do sashings around your blocks, um, that's um, and the whole other ball game, but you're going to use the pieces to yardage and you need to know once again your width and the number of the pieces you want to cut. Um, so if I was putting sashing just between the blocks, not around the outside because I usually do the uh, use the the inner border as like my sashing border. So if I want I would so what I would need is six two and a half by twelve and a half inch pieces and it tells me I need three-eighths of a yard for that and then I need to calculate that that just gives me the the strips between the first and the second and the second and the third block so that doesn't cover um, the strips at the bottom of the blocks. So if I'm not doing cornerstones, I'm just going to do a strip all the way across, then I'd only need two strips and they would be two and a half by, let's see, 36, they'd be by 40, I believe. And then that would tell me I need one and an eighth yards. If I wanted to cut it by the the length of the fabric, if I want to cut it by the width, I only need a sixth of a yard. So that's the difference between these two on how you cut them, whether you're cutting it by the width of the fabric or by the length of the fabric. 
So, of course, doing sashing in this quilt would completely change the dimensions of your uh, borders and your total and your binding. All of that would change. So that would give, be completely different. So now we just need to add up all the the yardage that we need. So what you would do would just add up by color. I know in teal I need three quarters here. I need three eighths here and one third here. Add those all up together and I got one and a third yard. For the aqua I need a half here. Five eighths here. That gave me one and a quarter. And then the white I need five eighths of a yard here because this is a different fabric than here than the backing. And then the backing I need one and two thirds yards. Now I can take this to the fabric store and purchase the fabric that I want for the quilt. Okay, if you don't have this app on your phone and you don't have any software, which is another thing that you can use, there's quilt uh, designing software out there that you can buy. It does cost quite a bit, so it's an investment, but you can buy that. But there are apps on that you can download for free on your phone that will help like the Robert Kaufman app. But if you don't have any of those and you're not interested in using them, you basically just need to know how many pieces you can get out of a strip of fabric. So if you're needing um, nine four and a half inch squares, you need to know how much you can get out of a strip. Now, a, I like to use visuals. So this is a, a strip of fabric and we know a, a yard is 36 inches long and the width of the fabric is anywhere from 42 to 45 so I always use 42 since that's the smallest number and um, so if you want you want nine pieces and you need to figure out how many you can get out of a strip of fabric and they're four and a half inches wide you need to divide your 42 by um, uh, four and a half so I'm going to use my calculator instead of doing this a long way so let me pull that up again and so if we do 42 inches divided by 4.5 um, that gives me 9.3 so I know I can get nine full pieces so um, We'll just put nine up here so I know I can get nine pieces. So that will tell me how many strips. If I only need nine pieces, I just need one strip four and a half inches wide. If I need 18 pieces, then I need two strips of fabric that are four and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric, the 42 inches. And just do that for anything. Now, if we need 144 pieces that are two and a half inches wide, we're going to take the 42 of the width of the fabric and then divide that by two and a half. And that means I can get 16 pieces out of 42. So I need um, 144. So um, how many strips of fabric would I need for that? So we'll take the 144 and then divide it by the 16. And that means I need nine strips of fabric. So you can double check that. Um, and nine times 16, which is how many pieces we can get out of there, should equal 144. So that's one way you can just do it with your, your calculator and then figure it out that way and then just add up the width of the strip. So I need um, nine strips that are four and a half inches wide. So nine or nine strips that are two and a half inches wide. Nine times 2.5, 22 and a half inches. So uh, a half yard is 18. So you're needing um, almost three quarters of a yard. So I would go ahead and buy three quarters of a yard for that and that's how much I would need for those pieces. So that is the long way to do it. It takes a lot of math. Um, you know, use your calculator 
and um, just for safety just for kind of a safety net you know you can always add a little extra fabric a lot of times um, the fabric stores are going to run out of the fabric you want you know if you buy it ahead of time and you don't get around to making this quilt for quite a while they may be out of it by the time you're ready for it and you realize that you're short so you can always buy a little bit extra you know add an extra quarter yard or a half yard to your measurements so you've got a little bit extra in case you've miscut or you miscalculated or you decide you want to add a couple extra blocks to your design or you want to add some accessories to it like maybe you want to add some pillow shams to a bed quilt or um, you want to make a small wall hanging or something for your bedroom after you've got your quilt done so that way you've got extra fabric that you can use and um, you know it's just a little bit of a safety net so um, I hope this helps um, this form um, is on my blog that you can download it and on my computer I have uh, formulas entered into these um, sections here so that it, it will automatically calculate the number of pieces I need for a quilt. So if I put in here I need uh, four pieces per block it will tell me how many I need for the entire quilt because I have up here the number of blocks that I have. So this number is keyed in with this row here and then the, the answers will come out here. So you'd have to key in the formulas because this is just in a PDF format. And every time I use this worksheet um, I find things to change on it to make it easier for me and right now this is working but today I was thinking maybe I will move this section up here and leave this whole section down here for notes instead of the notes being on the side. I haven't decided which way is going to be best but I'm, I can try it either way so if you're familiar with Excel this will be easy for you to put on your computer if you're not um, you know there are uh, tutorials online you could probably find that would help you or you can just use this as it is and just use your um, regular calculator or the Robert Kaufman app or another quilt calculator that will help you figure out all of this and um, hopefully that will help. Well I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope it gave you some ideas on how you can calculate the yardage that you need to make a quilt top and um, I hope it will help you move forward with your quilts. This is I think it's helpful for when you're not following a commercial pattern and you're just doing this from scratch like that's the way I usually do it. I don't often follow a commercial pattern. I uh, find a block I like and then I just kind of go from there. So this has helped me a lot. The uh, Robert Kaufman app and just a regular calculator. Um, I do have uh, a commercial quilting software on an old laptop and it's old software and it's out of date and it doesn't work very well at the moment. So I haven't used that in several years. I just have never um, gone out and uh, bought new software because I was busy machine quilting for people and I really wasn't making my own quilts for a while so I didn't need it. So uh, I may buy some in the future. I don't know. Um, if I get into making a lot more quilts I think it would be worth it and I, I probably will but at the moment this uh, app is helping me a lot and it's working and uh, so I'm using it and uh, I hope you give it a try and or find another app that works for you or this worksheet maybe this will help help you anyway the worksheet is on my blog and there's a link in the description box below so um, download that and see how that works for you feel free to rearrange it to make it suit your needs and um, I hope it helps you in the future so um, I hope you like this video and if you did please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so that you'll be notified when the next video comes up and in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. 
and to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.